Well, it's a wonderful, dreary, miserable Scottish day here today. And my task of the day is to investigate uh, an OBD code P2015. The next thing is to get my trusty ELM327 code reader. Uh, cost a fortune. I think it was about £5 on uh, either AliExpress or uh, eBay. So that's what I'll be using today to verify the, uh, the code. ESC, like myself, if you're wondering where the code reader goes, it actually goes underneath here on a right hand drive. The, uh, the slot is right there. So just the right hand side of the accelerator. And let's see. The only thing about this particular um, orientation is you can't actually see the lights um, on a previous car uh, you could actually see the LEDs to confirm that it was all plugged in and working of course now that I'm doing this the uh, the rain started so anyway we'll go in and we'll uh, turn on the ignition and see what the code reader says I'm going to be using torque so I'll we'll need to let's see if it connects to the car okay okay so we've got the internet still trying to connect to the car That's it connected. So uh, obviously these are just to check lights, uh, but that's what I'm getting on the dash. Um, so let's go in and see what the fault codes are. Hopefully this is focusing okay. Oh, I don't know how to do screen recording, so uh, I'm having to do it the old school way. So there you have it. Intake manifold, runner position sensor switch, circuit range performance bank 1. So as far as I understand, performance bank 1 is uh, is this main set of flaps inside the manifold. <clears throat> I believe there's another one at the bottom which is a rotating cylinder. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> okay, so now we'll go and have a look and see where that is under the bonnet. A little bit of further information so that's what it says when you do it um, but anyway I'll go under the bonnet and show you what I believe it is in the, in the, the drizzle here under the bonnet lovely cold day so what we need to do is we need to get access to this thing here which is, uh, I think, a swirl control actuator or something like that, or manifold actuator. So I need to take this uh, engine cover off. To remove the engine cover, it's just, uh, it's just pushed on. You just need to give it a tug. Tug at the back there. Tug here. And then lift it off. Now, this is the thing. I'll maybe wait until the traffic goes by. So this unit here is supposedly what's given the problem. Um, some people say that you just need to uh, clean up the linkages. So there's obviously one linkage right there. And then there's obviously something at the other end way down in the, uh, the depths there. Um, but if I push this with my finger it will it will move 
you can feel it's obviously like on a motor or something um, there's a little bit of resistance but it seems to move okay so what I've got to figure out is obviously I need to take this sensor off so looks like I need to un take a bolt out here looks like a 10 mil there's another one down there then obviously we've got the electrical harness here. I'll need to double check that everything's okay with these connectors. I see this tape started to uh, unravel itself. But I shall figure that out. It's, I say it's a miserable day here, so I'll just have a quick look at this and uh, continue. Now, I just actually noticed there's actually a hidden bolt at the bottom here and it looks like I'll have to undo these three bolts to move this cabling out of the way to get in. You can maybe just see it there. There's a bolt in there. So you've obviously got the 10mm here, here, here and there but then there's also one at the bottom. That uh, cable moved out of the way, and there's that, uh, that additional 10 millimeter bolt needs to come out of the bottom. It's now actually the following day. I actually had to find out or get some further information how to remove. Um, this arm that's connected to the, the control module and it turns out that this you've got this nylon washer and then you've got obviously a metallic looking washer well it appears that the metallic washer just here on the inside is actually a circlip so I'm now gonna turn that round or try and get it off with a pair of pliers or a combination of pliers and a screwdriver and then remove the module. Um, you don't actually have to undo these two bolts here and there but <clears throat> I think you'll agree it gives you a bit more space to work from if you do. So there you go. Hopefully you can see this but this is the technique I've used. I've just put a small flat headed screwdriver in here and I'm just kind of twisting it and hopefully you can see that starting to come up. I'm not going to do any further with the screwdriver. I'm just going to get a pair of pliers and see if I can uh, grab it. Oh, not that went back on. So anyway, I'm not going to try and do it with one hand. I'll get that uh, that circlip taken off and then it comes apart. One slightly misshapen uh, circlip pulled out. So presumably I can just pull, push this lever out, but I'll use uh, two hands again. Well, now that that's uh, apart, I can really feel that. You see how I'm actually rotating the sensor, but the pivot, the pivot's not moving. So. It does certainly look like this is kind of seized up, so fingers crossed, uh, once I take this off and uh, get this oiled up, it'll allow it to move freely because it doesn't seem to be pivoting at this point at all. And when I rotate the sensor, I mean, you can get a little bit of movement on it there, but it's, you can see there when I'm turning it, it's not so much the the bar where it's pivoting, it's just the uh, the actuator. So I'm hoping if I take this apart, grease it up, put it back together, it'll move freely. Okay, so I've now disconnected the actuator. This this pivot here, hopefully you can see that, it's terrible light. That's not too bad. The, presumably the flaps are moving okay. Seems to I can hear something squeaking there anyway. But yeah, that that does move. Um, there's a bit of... 
bit of corrosion that needs to get cleaned off there certainly. I'll get some steel wool on that. Um, don't know if I should undo that and then take it off or just leave it as it is. But anyway, I'll clean it up first and then I'll get some grease or something on this bit. And then here's the uh, here's the actual actuator itself. You can see that it definitely needs cleaned up. And it's quite quite rusty looking in there as well. I don't know how you test this. There must be a test to uh, to see if it actually operates properly. But uh, anyway, I'll clean it up and uh, put it back together. Given that a bit of a clean up, just used a bit of uh, sandpaper on it. And I've done a little bit of wire brushing. I'll see how freely that turns inside the copper bush and then I'll apply some grease. That's it in there, that's uh, that's very free moving. So I'm going to put some grease, I've just got some uh, multi purpose grease. I'm just going to use that. I'll put a little bit around the shaft and then I'll pop it back together. But first of all, I shall put this back in uh, to the swirl flaps end. I'm now putting the circlet back in. You can see that just when I pull that back and forth, the uh, the bar is pivoting nicely. I haven't put everything else back together yet, but anyway, I've tightened up the, uh, the nut again that held in the bar. So I put some grease and now just put it all back together. I did find it was easier putting this uh, bottom nut in, or bottom bolt in, sorry, uh, before everything else back in. This kind of allows you to move about. So I put it back together and then we'll start her up. That's everything put back together. The eagle eyed amongst you. I might notice I've put a bit of tape on this uh, wiring where the tape has started to unravel. So I've done up these two bolts for the uh, carrier. Uh, I've done I've done up the three bolts. There's one there, one there, and then there's one at the back, which you can't see now. And then I had to remove this uh, cabling. So you've got three 10 mil nuts, one there, sorry, bolts, one there, one there, and one here. It's it's a fairly simple job when you understand that there's a circlip on there. Uh, mine was certainly quite corroded, but uh, that's the joys of Scottish winters and using salt on the roads here. What did I need? Well, I had my. Uh, Trusty socket set, 10mm socket is the only thing I used. Uh, I had a couple of pairs of pliers uh, for removal of the circlip. I just used uh, an electrical screwdriver because it's quite nice and thin to get in and prise the uh, circlip out. And then I held held the exposed part of the circlip with these long nose pliers, pulled it out. Used a little bit of um, lubricant spray I guess is the best way to put it. Uh, and then I also decided to use a bit of uh, multi-purpose grease. So you don't really need very much to do this. So now it's time to uh, start the car up, take it for a run and see if the check engine light stays off. Just taking the car out. Uh, from what I understand, the swirl flaps become active after two and a half thousand RPM. Um, so I've taken the car up to roughly three thousand RPM, and there's no sign of any check engine light. Um, looks like I did this just in time because look at those lovely clouds. Oh, and there's the train. But yeah, uh, so far. So far, so good. Um, I'll report back in a couple of days uh, with any comments if uh, if something does come up. 
but I've cleared the code and there's no sign of anything coming up yet but you know famous last words and all that so hopefully this might help somebody uh, one of the other things is I've got the 1.6 litre so um, if you've got the 2 litre engine your swirl flap actuator or your swirl actuator or whatever the hell they call it assembly uh, will be on the right hand side of the engine as you look at it from the front uh, mine's on the top left same as the Hyundai i30 and my car is a Kia Seed uh, 1.6 Ecodynamics edition so there we go.